morning and it is a great morning for many people because here in Australia, the gyms are open again. A few weeks back, the government announced sort of a three-stage approach to how they were going to reopen everything. Um, and it was up to the states themselves to determine how things would be implemented. But one of the big things that was a uh, big takeaway from this weekend is that gyms and other places of exercise can now be open. So places that do classes can now be open as well, which is great because uh, the gym is open and also my Kung Fu is open. So I'm back doing Kung Fu and back at the gym, finally. Now, of course, each place needs to put in their own regulations to try and prevent the spread of coronavirus and all of that. So like at the gym, uh, when you walk in, there's sanitization stations so you can get sanitizer for your hands. Uh, they've also got signs all over the place saying that please wipe down the equipment before and after use, make sure you're using a towel and yeah, just generally trying to keep people being as sanitary as possible to prevent any potential spread of any infectious disease. So going into the gym is great as sort of a cross training from triathlon exercise. It gives you a little bit of a break from the normal sort of swim, bike and run. Um, and also if you don't like doing some of the exercises from triathlon, such as I'm not a big fan of swimming, so you can do other exercises which sort of emulate the muscles used within that sport. So for me doing, not doing physical swimming that much. I was doing some of the pull downs, doing a lot of upper body, back and arm workouts. So yeah, it's really nice being back. And one of the problems which I've noticed with this whole coronavirus, and unfortunately it's just something that goes with it, is that because there's so many different rules, so many different announcements, and so many different changes to the rules so often, it's hard to keep track of what are the actual current rules. So with doing Kung Fu, up until Friday, it was that there was maybe 10 people allowed per class, but you could have as many people in the room as was allowed as per the four square meter rule. So where you've got four square meters sort of around you of space. So one person per four meter squared. But on Friday, apparently, and I didn't actually see the announcement, but apparently that's now been changed. So you can have up to 20 people or Maybe you can have up to as many people as allowed within that classroom setting so long as it complies with the four square meter rule. I don't know. All these rules keep changing. And while it's nice that it's a positive change for once, not like it was two months ago where it was just negative change, negative change, negative change, it's just hard to keep track and understand what are we actually allowed to do. It's also nice to see restaurants, cafes, pubs, clubs, all those sorts of things reopening again. I think the rule there is you're allowed to, once again, have as many people within the four meter squared rule allowed within your venue, um, up to a maximum of 50 people per restaurant area, I think. Um, pretty sure it's that way because we went to Parramatta Leagues Club the other night with my dad and um, his partner, and there were multiple restaurants, all of which were allowed to have 50 people within them. So even though it's the same venue, you're allowed to have 50 people as long as it's a separated dining area or something like that. So yes, it's great having things now starting to open, um, but that is dependent. Of course, at the moment in Australia, we have had a really good success rate with the whole coronavirus situation. Over the last maybe two weeks, three weeks, we've had an average of maybe four, five to 10 cases per day and there's not really much in the way of unknown community transmission which is great that means that australia out of a lot of countries around the world are really getting on top of this whole coronavirus situation um, one of the best countries in the world of course is new zealand so those damn kiwis they did the massive lockdown really really early on complete lockdown you weren't allowed even out of your house um, and they didn't even have that many cases at that time but now they haven't had a single case of coronavirus for over, I think it's like two or three weeks. Um, so they've declared victory. And although they're not allowing any international travel, they are allowing domestic travel. They're allowing reopening of everything as per how it was pre 
COVID situation. So New Zealand is in an excellent situation. And I'm really hoping that Australia gets as close as possible to that as soon as possible. My week of training has been going very well. I've done every session that has been provided to me. As I talked about a couple of weeks ago, I've signed up to a training plan. And I find that training plans where it's provided to you of what to do are really, I just find I do the exercises more. Whereas if I do my own training, I do like self training and tell myself what I want to do and when I want to do it, that I just don't end up doing it. Um, many people are different. If you find that you can self-regulate your own training plan and you follow that training plan and you do it, then that's great for you. But for me, and if you're having trouble following your own self-training plan, maybe it's a good idea to have a look at a tailored training plan that's provided to you, either by a coach or a semi-automated style coach system. I'm using a training plan called Team Trainiac. Um, so the website is teamtrainiac.com and it's run by Triathlon Taran from his YouTube channel. You may have seen that channel before if you've been getting into triathlon. And it's a slightly cheaper system than if you were to say have a coach yourself. Um, I know when I was training with a coach a year and a half ago when training for the Ironman Australia, um, that was $120 a month or something like that, Australian dollars. So Team Trainiac cost me about $80 to $90, depending on the exchange rate at the time. So it is a little bit cheaper than a, an actual coach, but it's providing me a good plan and I am following that plan. So definitely worthwhile for me. And if you are having trouble in following your own plans or following through with exercises, keep making excuses, whatever, I do recommend having a quick look at teamtrainiac.com. And another part I quite enjoy about the whole Team Trainiac platform is they've got this leaderboard functionality. So um, it is being improved in the future right now. It's, it's okay, but for me, it's kind of nice because I only started a couple of weeks ago. So I've done 100% of the exercises and there's also some guidance material and you also get marked on how many of the guidance materials you've looked at. So I'm 100% of the exercises, 100% of the guidance material. I'm number one on the leaderboard on the Team Trainiac platform. So that's kind of cool. Um, and I'm going to try and hold that position as long as possible, which means that I, of course, I need to do every single one of my exercises. Um, I've only got two more this week, which I'm going to be doing this afternoon, which is my long ride, about two and a half hours, followed by a brick run of only 10 minutes, but it's got to be at a race pace. So the idea is you get your legs used to doing race pace straight after doing a long ride. Another thing I've incorporated into my training this week is I've purchased myself the Garmin Smart Scale, whatever it is, the Garmin Scale that connects to your Garmin Connect account and measures your weight, instantly transferring it to your Garmin account so you can sort of automatically keep track of it. I am terrible at inserting my weight into any tracking app. I'll weigh myself almost daily, but I'll always forget to put it into any app. So having it automatically do that, first of all, is just a ridiculously good feature for me anyway. And the smart scales also provide you with a whole bunch of other data. So it's not just your body weight. It also works out based on your height and sends pulses through your legs to work out sort of your fat percentage, your muscle mass, lean muscle mass, your bone density, your water or hydration levels, that sort of thing. And I know a lot of these are typically based on estimations within the system. So it'll take some readings and it does some estimating based on that. So the actual absolute values won't be 100% accurate, but what will be accurate over time is the change in those values. And that I think is what's gonna be the most value for me. I will be able to give a bit of a better review after I've used it for a while. Um, I've only been using it for one day so far and so far it seems to be pretty good. The setup process was nice and easy. You just turn it on, set whatever scale you want to be using, whether it's stones, pounds, or kilograms. Um, you put in the batteries, turn it on, or it automatically turns itself on, set it down, and then you just need to connect it to your app. So I connect it via the Garmin Connect app, via Bluetooth, it does a little talk, then I tell it how to connect to the wireless, um, so the Wi-Fi within my house, and it connects to the Wi-Fi, and from then on, it's just automated. As long as the Wi-Fi is working, it will be connecting to that, and it will be sending all the data immediately straight to my Garmin Connect account. So 
I don't have to write that data into any sort of log. The whole setup process for me took about five minutes, grand total. So yeah, really easy, a lot easier than I was thinking it was going to be. Anyway, that about does it for me this week. Thanks for watching. If you want more swim, bike, run and exercise content every week from here in Australia, then hit that like and subscribe button and I will see you in the next one. Cheerio.